Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Johnson versus Johnson. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Mr. Johnson, you are here with your wife, but you are positive her newborn daughter, Diari, is not your biological child. You have petitioned this court to grant you a paternity test so you can get your name removed from the birth certificate. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Johnson, you say that despite your husband's fears, you are confident he fathered your daughter and you intend to prove paternity today. Is this correct? Yes, Your Honor. This court must decide if there is sufficient evidence to grant a test. I want to start with you, Mr. Johnson. Why do you need the test so badly? Because, I mean, I want to... I want to be for sure. I take care of all my kids. I, 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 my name is on the birth certificate. I don't want to... I don't want a child to have my last name if it's really not mine. And because you're married, you're on the birth certificate because the child was born within the marriage. Of course. Um, half of the time, I don't want to be there. I don't want to assist with the child. I don't want to do too much as far as uh, fathering goes because... I mean, I'm really not sure, you know? I'm, I'm kind of uncomfortable, so... Majority of the time, I'm just, like, piling myself up with work, staying gone, you know? So you're admittedly detaching yourself from the home and the family? Yeah, because I don't want to get hurt. You're so afraid that the child is not yours. <clears throat> of course. So, Ms. Johnson, how is this affecting you? How is this affecting the home? My family's on the line. Um... I'm sorry, it's emotional. You don't have to be sorry. Family and children are the most important things to us. Take a breath and go ahead. I feel like my kids don't deserve this. My daughter don't. She's only 10 days old. Like, she shouldn't have to be the black sheep of the family. I'm just trying to protect myself. Right. You know? And I'm not doing... trying to hurt anyone, but I'm just trying to protect myself. Right. And in doing that, she feels you separating from the family. So we know that there is a lot on the line here. Am I correct? Correct. So what happened? How do we get here? How does a married couple end up here before me in paternity court? Uh, honestly, we, um, we always had a rocky relationship. Uh, Ten years, separated numerous times, mostly because of me. Um, I was always in the streets. This was like a normal thing for me, being in the streets, being gone, you know, dealing with other women. It was, it was always... I never really cared the way I should, you know. After we lost our child, I just didn't, like, take heed to it. I just kept drilling and kept drilling and just doing what I wanted to do. I just, I just never took her feelings into consideration. So, I mean... Honestly, I can say that I played a big part in us being here today. Okay. But... I'll mostly all of it because of him. So, I appreciate the honesty. I'm gonna say that first off. I may not appreciate the behavior, but I appreciate the honesty. Mm -hmm. When you mess everything up, you gotta be man enough to say, you know what? A lot of the reason why we're here is because of me. We may have to examine what Ms. Johnson did because... Of... Unfortunately, we're in paternity court, so that's what we're gonna have to do. But I like the fact that as a man, you stood here and said... Thank you. ...I helped make this mess. Thank you. So, Ms. Johnson, your husband's testified that a lot of the reason why you got to this point is because of him. What happened? When we first separated, it was just because of infidelity, finding numbers in his phone, finding pictures. Like, all types of stuff just was happening. It felt like... He didn't care. Like, I find it for that moment, he'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, but then he'd go back right back to doing it. So, I mean, I... I left. A lot of it was, like, business. Like, she was... That's what like, he Like, I'm an artist, so I do a lot... I deal with a lot of women. But it don't have to be, oh, you're beautiful, what, uh, what you doing, meet me upstairs, you know, stuff like that. That's not... That's not at that moment, At that moment, I, I felt that's what was needed. I feel yeah. like it don't take all it. It don't take all it. Well... This is actually a really good moment and a relationship lesson that many have had to learn. Because a lot of people work in businesses where they work predominantly with the opposite sex. Right. And it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Because what you tend to do is cross that line because it's very easy for that initial flirtation to turn into a lot more and destroy your family and your home, which is what it's doing. I mean, it actually, sometimes it did turn into much more. 
Sometimes it did. Yep. Uh, oh, I, I mean, know it did. That's why we that's why we 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 feud a lot. That's why we uh, always break up. So how long did the separation last? A About year. About a year. A year. Yes. All right, what happened? Me losing my child, you know, having a miscarriage. Um, I feel like I did it by myself. Like I went through the pain, the crying, everything by myself. Like he wasn't there. So I feel like ain't no sense of me being in the house. It was just it was just like for me. It was more or less, I didn't feel like a man when I was around her. She did. She she never addressed me enough to make me feel like a man. I, I feel he was like addressing I was addressing too many other women. So I why feel should like I support? Why should I be there? Don't say you didn't feel like a man, because I always say, if you a man, you feel like a man. A woman can't make you feel or not make you feel like a man. A man is a man. Now, I will say this. If you felt like you were giving and giving and you weren't getting reciprocity and that pulled you out of the house, that happens in relationships all the time. I get that. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So you separated for a whole year. What happens during the separation? Well, during the separation, I just was... Just doing her and I was doing me. And, and we weren't planning on getting back together. And so you were out dating... Dating, yeah. ...and having sex. Yes. And you were with multiple people, one Just person... Just one person. ...with one person. Yes. And so, Mr. Johnson... Yes. ...after a year apart, how do you get back together? I don't know what type of change of heart she had. She just wanted to come over. We cook, we have family dinner, family movie night, and one thing led to the next. I just saw how my kids reacted to it, so that's what made me want to go back. Because you I was saw like, how happy your children while. were yes. to be with their dad and with you mm -hmm. and this. Yes, I understand yes. that. And so how soon after you reconnected did you find out she was pregnant? Uh, maybe about two weeks or something like that. After, after the reconciliation. Yeah. And I was excited. I was scared. Because I, I, I know I had it. sex with somebody else. So he was excited and you were scared. Yes. Because you did have sex with someone else during the time you were yes. broken up we were and thought you were never getting back together again. Right. So, Mr. Johnson, you said you were excited. How do you go from excitement to doubt? Um... After the excitement, uh, we celebrated. We talked about it. You know, I mean, that was like the best time for me at that moment. Like, but here comes a week or so later, and she's like, um, "I got something to tell you." And what did she say? She said, "It's possible." I said, "I said, just be honest. Is it possible?" She was like, "Yeah, it is possible that someone else may father." I just kind of like lost all everything because all I asked was a simple question, and I just didn't get that answer. So it's kind of hard for me. So you do admit, Ms. Johnson, that you had unprotected sex with this other man? Yes, Your Honor. And then when you reconciled with your husband, you had unprotected sex with him? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I didn't know who my baby's father was because I didn't know when I got pregnant, like what day I got pregnant. And by me going back to him so fast after being with somebody else, it was... it was scary. Did you ever tell the other man that he potentially could be the father? Yes, Your Honor. What was his response? He just said, well, in the beginning, it was like, I'll be there, but... Like, if she's mine, I'll be there. But then, after she was born, I asked him to come to paternity court. He said, um, I must have doubt, or I must feel like it's his, and I was doing... Like, it was ridiculous for him to come. So, let me ask you something. When did you two reconnect? Can you tell me specifically when that was? On um, uh, June 20th. All right. I just want to do a little calculating myself. I have a conception calculator here. When was Diari born? She was born on uh, the 10th of this month. All right, March 10th. So if we put the birth date of March 10th, 2019 and hit calculate, it says the window of conception would be June 15th, through June 19th. <clears throat> now, let me go to the next page. So, that would put the date of intercourse between June 12th and June 18th. Were you all back together then? That's why I feel the way I feel. Like, no matter how you and dress it up... And that's why you 
are asking this court to grant this test. Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Well, after hearing the testimony presented before me today, this court has determined that there is sufficient evidence to order paternity testing in this case. We will reconvene after both of you submit to DNA testing done by our laboratory, and I will have the results for you then. In addition to that, because you all are married and you have a family with other children, I'm gonna send you off to the laboratory, but first I'm gonna send you to talk to Dr. Jeff because I believe it is important that you all begin to do the work. You're still married. I don't want to see this family destroyed. And I want you to be prepared. <laughs> Court is adjourned. And do you think you can accept the fact that your wife was with someone else? Well, I've kind of accepted it, but it's still uncomfortable. One thing I would say to the two of you, get yourselves ready for this result. Court is back in session in the case of Johnson versus Johnson. In our earlier hearing, uh, I found that there was sufficient evidence to order both of you to submit to DNA testing at our laboratory. Since our last hearing, what has gone through your mind? No matter what the outcome is, I just kind of, I just want to be able to deal with it. That's all. How about you, Ms. Johnson? Well, I've been nervous, kind of scared. Um... I just don't know what to feel right, to be honest. So if your husband is not Diari's biological father, do you know where the other father is? Yes, Your Honor. Has he expressed at all his willingness to be a part of Diari's life? Just in the beginning. I haven't really spoke to him, like, throughout my pregnancy or after, really. Okay. Dr. Jeff, I'd like to ask you, because this is a very difficult situation, and we have a family here. How do people prepare themselves for news that could devastate the fabric of their family? Well, I, I think it's important for them, and we had spoken about this, to look at some of the other challenges that they have not dealt with. You talked with them a few days ago about the death of their child. She had a miscarriage, Mrs. Johnson had a miscarriage. And so I followed up on that cue and found out that Mr. Johnson had not dealt with that miscarriage. Instead, it almost propelled him, if you will, into that separation and acting out sexually. He cried. Yes. And he started working through it. And I think it will deliver them in a place just for you, Judge, where whatever this result is, I think, I hope, they'll be able to handle it. Well, I am here and I have the results for you. But as you do with every family that walks out of this courtroom with good or bad results, however they perceive it, you're there for them. And you're going to be there for the Johnsons as well. You are Absolutely. going to meet with them again, no matter what the results are. He's going to work with you and he's going to help give you the tools and help you identify the steps you need to take to keep your family together, all right? Are you ready for the results? Yes. Yes, Shauna. Jerome, may I have the envelope, please? <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Johnson versus Johnson. When it comes to 12-day-old Diari Johnson, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. That's great oh, news. Absolutely. So happy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. 
Wow. My nerves were shot, honey. Yeah. I was yeah. like, woo! I'm so happy for you all. Woo! Right? <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, you have one beautiful smile. I hadn't seen it all. <laughs> Been with you for two days. I ain't seen it. I'm so happy. And you, too, I haven't seen you smile either. Oh. Well, what a relief it is. Man. We got that truth. And you're blessed. It's the truth you wanted. Yes, yes. And so now, how do we activate that blessing even further? I think that's the question of the day now. And I think we do that with forgiveness. We do that by doing the work Dr. Jeff talked about. So I'm going to send you back with Dr. Jeff now. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you the best. Court is adjourned. Thank you, Dr. Jeff. Thank you. <laughs>